So now the next RNA viruses which we are going to discuss is arbo viruses. Arbo means insects, right? Insects. So uh, insect plays important role in transmitting this viruses. That's what it is called arbo viruses. Okay. So which is uh, which is helping in spreading of the arbo viruses? Insects. Insect means it could be uh, the uh, most it's mosquitoes, but it could be it could be uh, take to be mite or whatever. Okay, most commonly it's mosquitoes. So those viruses which are spreaded by the insects are arboviruses. Okay, so we'll talk about that the infections. So when you talk about arthropod born arthropod born infections, mainly there are two families are important. One is Toga viridae and then Flaviviridae. Toga viridae one, which one? Chicken gunia, right? Chicken gunia virus. Question is asked. Chicken gunia viruses belongs to which virus? viride. Or they might give you all of the following or flaviviride except then chicken gunia will be out. Okay. Please remember. So chicken gunia is viride. And one more frequently asked question is in paramyxoviruses, which one? Rubella. Rubella is also belongs uh, belongs to togaviride. It's not under paramyxoviruses. Rubella belongs to togaviride. Okay. But your measles, mums, they belong to which one? Your uh, paramyxoviruses. Okay. That was a question. Togaviride. So remember, chicken gunia and rubella comes under toga every day. Yes, now flaviviruses. But the difference is here, they are spread by the uh, mosquitoes or insects, orthopod. There it is to contact, contact or through, uh, you know, through nasal or uh, through uh, contact person to person. Now, flavi. So flavivirus, what are the important flaviviruses you know? Of course, dengue. Dengue virus. And then other one is your, and the important one is your, Yes, you are very close. That is your yellow fever. Very good. Yellow fever. Okay. Yellow fever. And your Zika. Okay. And of course, your Japanese encephalitis and Kaisenur forest disease. They all are under flaviviruses. But one question uh, here also. Flavivirus is important here also, except chicken gunia. All these things will come. They are right. Okay. But if you remember in hepatitis virus, which hepatitis virus is flaviviride? Remember? Hepatitis, chocolate flavor. C. C is flavivirus. Chocolate flavor. Flavi flavor. Right? You remember, right? Hepatitis C is flavivirus. A is picarno. B is hep D and A. Hepatitis B. And hepatitis C is flavivirus. And hepatitis D is nothing. Hepatitis E is E for E C. E C. C for calcivirus. Hepatitis E is calcivirus. Okay. I'm just repeating it. Okay. Now, uh, and then questionable forest disease. Okay. Right. Now, next one. We are going to, these are the mosquitoes, okay? When you talk about mosquitoes, these are the common mosquitoes which are spreading. Anopheles, Aedes, the Aedes is otherwise called, if you, if you remember what Aedes is otherwise called, Aedes is otherwise called the, what? Tiger mosquito, you know that, tiger mosquito. Yeah, right? So you see here, all this, this, this spots, like, you know, spotted wings and spotted, those things are catastrophic for your tiger mosquito, okay? We'll talk about individual disease and culex. So infection caused by various mosquitoes. This is a very important question, you must know. This is a frequently asked question, you can say. Okay, very, very important. So, now tell me, which are the mosquitoes or, uh, you know, you know that they spread it by different, different uh, things. What are things you know? Anopheles mosquito. Which one? Your? Are you saying malaria? You're right. So, all the malaria causing, which one? Malaria is caused by which one? Plasmodium. Plasmodium parasite. Plasmodium, vivax, ovale, falciparum, malaria, everything comes under here. So, okay, so it's anopheles and you know that is especially female anopheles mosquito, which is a blood sucker, not the male. Male is usually, depending on the plant juices, only female. The female anopheles mosquito cost evasion. So, that's the mosquito causing malaria. What about your culex? Culex, how do you remember the culex? Culex is very simple. I have some shortcuts for you how to, how I remember. It's totally up to you how you want to remember. So, culex, remember coolies. Uh, you know, coolies, coolies are the one, you know, who are uh, working in the railway stations, who's carrying all the, uh, you know, the weight things and all on their top, right? The luggages and all. So, one, these coolies, you know, they uh, stand, they, they carry the luggages whole time, right? They are carrying the whole luggage on the top. So, they're standing down. The legs become very big. So, when leg is big, which is the disease coming into your mind, when the legs are becoming big, 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 Infected, big, that is your elephantiasis, right? They have elephant leg, elephantiasis. Elephantiasis, Culex causes elephantiasis. And one more, Culex, where there are a lot of coolies in the world. One is in Japan, in India, elephantiasis. But in Japan and also in West Nile. 
this is a clue how to remember okay there's nothing true and all just to remember the coolies or coolies get elephant ears because they stand long they get big big leg and other one is uh japan japan that Jap japan because it is japanese encephalitis japanese encephalitis and also coolies are abundant in west nile nile means other coolies are. so usko hai, kya hota hai? west nile fever west west nile fever also caused by your which one your culex mosquito got it so this is a question 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 all important it is it is otherwise called tiger mosquito all the fever anything you know comes with the fever fever will come here okay what are those let's start with your uh it is called dengue fever chikungunya chikungunya uh and your uh which one uh yellow fever and your zika zika fever okay so these are the four fevers you can say uh, caused by your Aedes mosquito. All are important. Repeatedly asked question. Repeatedly asked question. Okay. Except they might give you, you know, Japanese encephalitis or West Nile fever. So you will not make mistake. When elephant is Japan, West Nile, you would think that, oh yeah, it is West Nile. So that is Western. Coolies are in West, uh, in Japan, may Culex like that, you know, you will omit it. Okay. Uh, but see, this is a Culex. So there's one more, you know, I want to bring it here. I, we will talk about you know, this thing. Uh, in uh, bacteriology, where is that Leventhal coolie bodies you see? Leventhal coolie. There are also one coolies there. Leventhal coolie bodies. Which disease is that? Can you guess? This is a coolie. Okay, he's a coolie. He's carrying your luggage. Right? Luggage ko carry kar raha hai in the railway station. Okay, he's in the railway station. Fair. Kya hota hai? Just see. On the top of coolie ke upper, something is standing. What is this something? What is this bird? Can you make guess? Parrot, exactly. So it is a parrot. So what is the disease? It is cetacosis. Cetacosis. Coolie ke upper ek parrot hai. Okay, so that is cetacosis. Cetacosis is caused by chlamydia. Chlamydia, cetacosis. Chlamydia, ceta. Cosis, chlamydia setaki. Chlamydia setaki, the disease is cetacosis. Also frequently asked question because I'm bringing coolie mosquito here. There is no link. Coolie bodies is different. Okay, 11th coolie bodies. I just want to make a link that you know, you'll never forget. Okay, right. Now let's go to next topic. So now we'll talk about the dengue fever first. The other name for dengue fever is the breakbone fever. You know, the dengue is otherwise called breakbone fever or saddleback fever. Both are important. The fever is like, you know, there's a fever, there's a break, and then the next step sort of fever is very high, you know, then a break, and then again fever is very high. Like that it goes, okay? So it's a breakbone fever or saddleback fever. So, uh, uh, yeah, before that, mm, the fevers are very important. We have a lot of other different fevers also. We might, uh, let's see if you can remember a few of the fevers. Where do you see the step ladder fever? Step ladder fever. Just guess. You're going to answer now. Step ladder fever, where you'll see in which disease. And please tell me what is enteric fever? What is enteric fever? And then what is Pontiac fever? Pontiac fever. I'm going to separate it, separate. Okay. Yeah. So that there will be some space. Okay. Uh, Pontiac fever. And uh, where is this? Malta, Mediterranean, or Undoland fever. Who is causing this? And then also please tell me which one is causing your French fever? And please tell me which one is causing your uh, Q fever? Okay. Now, are you ready to answer? Okay. Tell me. Step ladder is, of course, typhoid fever. Your typhoid fever causes step ladder fever. Okay. Otherwise, also, enteric fever is other name for, again, typhoid. Typhoid fever. Okay. Pontiac fever, you know. Who use the ponch powder? Ponch powder kiska use hota hai? Legions. Legions of military recruits. Okay. So that's what I remember. Legions means they use ponch powder. So Pontiac fever is for Legionella. Legionella. Legionella ponch powder use karta hai? Legionella. Pontiac powder. Malta, Mediterranean, Undulant. Ye pura kiska hota hai? Who likes? Who likes to travel Malta, Mediterranean, uh, Undulant or Uganda, whatever it is? Who likes to travel? Uh, am I hearing Brusella? Yes, you're right. Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee likes to travel with Bruce Lee or Bruce Lee. This is in bacteriology. We're going to talk about this. It's going to be very interesting in bacteriology. You, you're going to have fun, a lot of fun in bacteriology. So, but now just remember, Mr. Bruce Lee likes Malta, Mediterranean, Ondulum. He likes to travel everywhere. Bruce, I'm, when I'm talking Bruce Lee is the actor, the Chinese actor, right? You know, the star, superstar. 
Okay, so Brusala is for him. Trench people. Who is trench? Who is always trench? Tired? Who? Who? Your queen. Queen. So which queen? Which queen? Not UK queen. I'm not going to Queen Elizabeth. You know, we, what, I gave you a clue. Quintana. So border club. Quintana. Quintana. Queen is trench. Quintana. Quintana. He Q fever pone then. Who is this queen? Who, who, uh, who caused the Q fever? Coxella burnetti. Coxella burnetti. These are some fevers which can be frequently asked in your exam. So please remember, I'm bringing all this here because you are talking about dengue fever here. Dengue or breakbone fever. Dengue or breakbone fever, otherwise called saddleback fever. That's what. Okay. Then serotypes of dengue is, you know, five to four, one to five. But which one is the most dangerous one? Which is the most dangerous one? Any answers? Which is the most dangerous one? What is your answer? If you are saying type two, you're right. Type 2 is the most dangerous one. The most dangerous question. This is a question. Question. Breakbone fever is a question. Saddleback fever is a question. And uh, vector, you know, already we spoke about the vector is always your, which one? Your vector is the Aedes, Aedes, Aedes. A-E-D-E-S. Aedes mosquito. Aedes mosquito is the vector. And usually, you know, what's the trend here? Uh, the, uh, the primary infection is usually what? The primary infection is usually by one serotype. And whenever uh, a sec if the secondary infection or the second infection is caused by another serotype, it's always dangerous. Usually what happens when you get a first infection, there's an antibody production. It will save the secondary infections, other infections, second time infections. But in dengue, it's opposite. That's the important thing. Okay, why it is like that? The primary antibody, when you get first time infection, the antibody, instead of protecting you, it starts increasing the severity of second infection instead of protecting it's making more harm so what is that uh, mechanism is called ade ade antibody dependent enhancement antibody dependent enhancement please remember this is typical only for your dengue enhancement okay d for dengue antibody dependent d for dengue okay de for dengue so this question was asked many pg uh, uh, fmg exams also i think Okay, it, it's expected question. So mainly what happened, this is non-neutralizing antibody. The non the idea, the reason is because of this non-neutralizing antibody, which is formed in the primary infection, uh, which is formed in this uh, primary infection, what happened instead of instead of saving this non-neutralizing antibodies, instead of saving the primary infection, instead of saving, instead of saving the after primary infection, instead of saving the secondary infection, they cause harm. It enhances the secondary infection. That's what called ADE. Okay. And usually what happened, the primary infection is caused by type 1 serotype and the secondary infection is caused by type 2 serotype. That's the usual and patient ends what? Dengue hemorrhagic fever. Severe dengue hemorrhagic fever. The primary dengue will be normal, normal. Then uh, that is because of dengue serotype one, he gets the first infection. And after some months or years, whatever, you know, he gets another infection, which is caused by serotype two, which is the most dangerous type. That's also dangerous. But also what happened, there is this mechanism. The primary infection has produced non-neutralizing antibody. That non-neutralizing antibody increases the severity of this second dengue infection. That's what, okay. So the patient ends up in dengue hemorrhagic fever, ended hemorrhagic fever, you know, apart from uh, severe fever, body pain, etc. There is some pain. Which pain is that? Which pain is that? Which region has this typical pain? What are you saying? Not joint pain. If it's in joint pain, also is there, but typical characteristic pain is retroorbital. Retroorbital pain. Retroorbital pain. Behind the eye, there's a severe pain. Most of us who are dengue will remember this. And platelet, of course, the characteristic which is which cells goes to platelet goes to. And what happened? How much is the count? Platelets go less. Platelet normal count it should be about two lakhs. So here it goes less than one lakh. Less than one lakh. That's also a question. Retroorbital pain, thrombocytopenia, and hemorrhages. Of course, hemorrhages because of platelet is low, so patient get hemorrhages. So different type of petechias, melinas, all those things. And of course, if the blood is lost, then patient will go to circulatory failure, and of course, end in the shock. DS is dengue. Uh, shock syndrome, yeah, dengue shock syndrome. So these all are the other pictures. Okay, you should know this one. And diagnosis, how do you do? So if the patient is coming to you, he just had, uh, let's say within five days and after five days, the diagnosis is totally different. If he's coming within five days and with the symptom of the dengue fever, giver, whatever it comes. So if you, if you suspect uh, mm, uh, dengue fever, which is the one you will tell? You will tell for an antigen test or antibody test. You have to tell an antigen test only because antibodies are produced after. IgM is produced after five days. So within five days, which antigen test you're going to say? Am I hearing NS1 antigen? Then you're right. NS1 antigen. NS1 antigen. It's a question. Within one week, the first week, within seven days, this is very good. But after five days, the best one is what? IgM. Dengue IgM. Dengue 
IgM antibody is the, uh, the diagnostic choice, ELISA again. Okay, and PCR is more sensitive and specific too. And tornico test. Tornico test, you know, what do you do? It's just a simple test, not seen in every patient, but it helps. You put a tornico on the arm, okay, and then uh, leave it for some time, and you'll see appearance of petechias, petechias in this, this cubital fossa. So in your uh, arm, no cubital fossa here. So what you have to do, how many rashes, how many petechias should be there? More than 20. More than 20 petechias. Okay, something like that. We have Chandler's index. Do you remember? Chandler's index in Chandler's index for which 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 parasite? Can you tell me which parasite? That is for hookworm. Hookworm. There we are counting the eggs. The eggs should be more than how much to say it is uh, endemic in that area? That will be more than two hundred. More than two hundred egg per ml of stool. Okay, more than two hundred. So there is two hundred here. More than twenty. I'm just bringing some links. Okay, guys, so that you will you know you will catch here and there, and micro is going to be very easy. Okay, vaccine is live vaccinated vaccine, not that much known. Chicken gunya, one thing, apart from, you know, the fever, comments in myalgia or whatever, all the uh, weakness, vomiting and all those things with that, the most important thing is joint, joint pain. Severe joint pain, joint deformity, which remains for months and years. Okay, severe one, that's what we're talking about. It. Yellow fever, you know, we just spoke, it's a Aedes mosquito. Uh, yellow fever also Aedes mosquito and the characteristic feature of uh, your uh, yellow fever is, what, what is the thing? We have fever, bradycardia, nausea, and vomiting. And of course, in India, there is no yellow fever. Please remember, okay? Because we have good uh, measures, safety measures uh, around the airport region. No proper, uh, this uh, uh, killing the mosquito program is very good for us. So that's what we don't have yellow fever in India. Please remember that, okay? Fever, bradycardia, nausea, vomiting. Uh, uh, so other symptoms are, of course, yellow. The name itself is yellow. So that's what you have about jointus. Jointus and renal failure is common. We don't have it in India. Of course, every virus, if you take, there is only two tests for most of the viruses. The uh, See, for bacteria, parasite, fungus is different. We have culture. With culture, you have ELISA, PCR, etc. For viruses, it's always initial test is ELISA. And to confirm, we have PCR. This is for all viruses, most viruses. Okay? Confirmatory is always uh, PCR. And for screening, we always go with ELISA, which is just a sensitive test. Specific is always PCR. Okay? That's it. That's one uh, small thing. If you confuse, you know, I don't think there is no culture culture for virus. We have that culture, you know, or cell culture, tissue culture, egg culture, but that is mostly for research purpose, not for normal diagnostic purpose. Okay, so remember that. So now, uh, PCR is done. So vaccine. What is the vaccine we are going to give? Yeah, the some vaccine name you must know. There is no other option. So which vaccine for yellow fever? Yellow fever. What I'm hearing? Am I hearing some numbers? 17 D. Very good. 17 D. Right? You got it. That's the thing. So, see, there are vaccines. See, few things you have to remember the vaccine's name. Example for chicken pox, it was? For chicken pox, what was the vaccine? It was? Okay. You are you're having a delicious chicken. Okay strain. Okay strain was used for chicken pox. Right? For chicken pox. And what about uh, your uh, measles? Edmonston. If you remember, Ed. Monston, Ed Monston, Ed Monston strain, yeah. And then for mums, I told who is having big, big bumps, bumps and mums. Kiska jala hota hai? That is called Geril, Geril, yeah, right? Geril, Geril strain, J R O L, Geril strain. For yellow fever, it is 17 D. Okay, yellow fever, it is 17 D is the live vaccinated vaccine we are using. So there are other things also, whatever vaccines are coming, and of course BCT, you know, Danish 1331 strain. Uh, so uh, when that uh, um, uh, that particular part comes, we'll talk about that. Okay, and for diphtheria, Park William strain. So we have so many strains, so many vaccines, and their strains are imported. Okay, here is 17 D. Only one problem. One thing you have to know about yellow fever. Mostly that will be your PSM uh, people will definitely will teach about it. Uh, which is who, who is contraindicated to take an yellow vaccine? Yellow fever, yellow color. Which yellow color is Anda. Anda ke under yolk. Inside the egg, the yellow color yolk part is yellow. That means in egg allergy, it causes egg allergy, okay, because it is derived from egg only. This vaccine is derived from the egg. So that's what, what we do. You don't give for egg allergy patient. Which patient is contained for yellow fever? Egg allergy. That's also a question. Can be asked, okay? Egg allergy patient, you don't give yellow fever uh, your vaccine, okay? Zika virus. Zika again, once again. Aedes, Aedes, Aedes. Aedes is always important. I don't know why. Uh, it just, it's, just, it's important vector for many of the important diseases. Apart from that, sexual route is also possible. If you remember Zika virus from Brazil, it started first. Now the important question. So there's one syndrome. Of course, the normal thing is fever and uh, Zika virus, fever and arthritis are the common symptoms. But the most important thing is um, one syndrome it causes. Which syndrome is that? It's very common. Uh, it, is, uh, it is related with your uh, muscles only. Yeah, uh, muscle paralysis. 
what was that syndrome? If you're saying Gullen Barre syndrome, then you're right. GBS. Okay. Gullen Barre. Uh, G U I L L Gullen uh, Barre. I have spelling mistakes, so please don't mind it. I just wanted you to know the disease, Gullen Barre syndrome. But ideally, GB is the most. Uh, so, yes, Zika virus causes Gullen Barre syndrome. Okay, fine. But which is the most common cause? Overall, which is the which is the bacteria or microbe? Which is the I gave you clue. So, which is the most common microbe that causes Gullen Barre syndrome? Can anybody? I think you're guessing. What you are saying? If you're guessing as Campylobacter, you're right. Campylobacter jejuni. Campylobacter jejuni. That is the most common cause of this thing. And it's frequently asked question. Okay. Right. Good. Now, congenital Zika syndrome. So, because we told it's sexually transmitted, that means it also has a vertical transmission. So, when the baby gets Zika virus, the symptoms should be same. Micro, microcephaly and calcification. Just like any other. Like uh, your CMV virus or your toxoplasma or, uh, uh, you know, uh, any congenital infection causing rubella also. Microcephaly calcifications all are common in all these infections. Okay. Now, diagnosis is PCR. Definitely, as I already told you. Now, the Japanese encephalitis. The most common cause of encephalitis, don't think too much. It's Japanese encephalitis only. Okay, in Asia, India, whatever, doesn't matter. The most common cause of encephalitis, if they ask, it is Japanese encephalitis. Okay. And you know, Japan people make kya jada hota hai? Kon, kon, kon se log jada hota hai? Coolies. The coolies are more in the uh, Japan. So, 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 Japanese encephalitis is transmitted by culex. That question is favorite question for most of the examiners. I don't know why they love to ask this uh, vector for Japanese encephalitis. Especially Japanese encephalitis, culex. Okay. So, one is your filariasis or elephantiasis. Uh, in fact, in filariasis, all the mosquitoes can cause. Okay. Culex, uh, anophilus, aedes, everything can cause. But most common is uh, uh, for your uh, filariasis is culex only. Apart from that, few uh, anophilus and they also can cause uh, your aedes also. But that is one thing. But for Japanese encephalitis and West Nile, Japan and West Nile, Kone look jada hota, Kuli jada hota, Kuli means Culex. Culex mosquito is more. Okay. Got it? The reservoirs of birds. Definitely birds. If you see mostly, uh, yeah, the the birds are from heron, crane, arid. These are the birds. If you uh, check in your Google, you can see this bird's picture. The reservoirs, this is the water. Basically, they're water birds. It's coming from them only. Okay. And it causes Japanese encephalitis. Uh, amplifiers of pigs. Mostly from the reported uh, cases reported from rural areas only. Symptoms will be, of course, nausea, vomiting, fever, and encephalitis. Mortality rate is definitely high, 20 to 30 percentage. Okay. And the diagnostic for any virus, again, same. ELISA or PCR. ELISA or PCR. Okay. Right. Now, the Kaisenur forest disease. Kaisenur forest disease, this is one of the uh, things. Okay. How it is transmitted? First of all, this is this monkey was isolated in which uh, which uh, state? That's just a question. K stands for K for not Kerala but Karnataka. Karnataka, Karnataka. Okay, it was it was usually initially it was Kaisenur is basically Mysore, Mysore. It was just micro in basically the monkeys. Okay, it's transmitted basically by the monkeys. The monkeys disease, Kaisenur forest disease. Okay, uh, so somewhat my place is close to Mysore only. So you know I will never forget this. Uh, Mysore monkey's disease, this is Karnataka state. So now vector. What is the vector here? Uh, vector for Kaisenur is, this is tick. Tick, tick. Hota hai. What happened in Kaisenur forest, in this forest, in this beautiful Kaisenur forest, with a lot of monkeys, there is you know, always this tick, tick, tick. There is some, you know, uh, uh, like a bomb, you know, tick, tick, tick. Hota hai. You always do tick, tick, tick in Kaisenur forest disease. Tick, tick, tick in the Kaisenur forest disease. Okay. Tick, tick, tick in question of forest disease okay right and uh, uh of course your uh, rats and squirrels also another uh this thing and monkeys are basic amplifiers here okay hemorrhagic fever and meningoencephalitis both are common with the question forest disease okay both the you have hemorrhagic fever also and then meningoencephalitis also that's it okay so these are the uh most common arboviruses we have spoke now we'll go to most important another important rna virus which is your rabies rabies virus okay you remember this is one of the Negative and also uh, naked virus. It comes in the negative sense. If you remember, rabies people are the negative people and also they are naked, right? We talked about it more. So fine, that is one thing. But now let's talk about the, uh, uh, how to remember this. So the shortcut I will give you or how you will remember, Lisa, this girl, Lisa, she has a dog. Lisa has a dog which got rabies, okay? And then she tried to kill the dog with, dog with, bullet and what she did 
or she want to kill it with bullet or she want to sell the dog so there are three questions answered in this part are you wondering can you guess what where I, I made this lisa has a dog which got rabies and then she tried to kill it with a bullet or she, uh, she wanted to kill it with a bullet or she wanted to sell the dog so can you get a clue why it's lisa because it belongs to which uh, uh, sub family that is lisa virus lisa virus okay and then why it's bullet the shape is bullet shaped Yes, cell is the special stain for staining the which bodies? Negri bodies. It's called cellar stain. Cellar stain. Okay. So all important questions are covered here now. You got you got all the answers for some three important questions. Rabbis will always, you can expect question very easily. There is no uh, this thing. Highly expected. 80 to 90 percent chance, right? So family is rabdo viride. Nothing to say. Subfamily, I told you that's what Lisa L Y S S A Lisa Viride. Okay, Lisa. Lisa has what? Lisa ke dog person. That Lisa likes dog so much. Unfortunately, she got unfortunately the the virus uh it got a rabies, the dog got rabies, so she wants to kill it. So, what is the shape of this one? You can see the shape. This is the bullet shape. The bullet shaped virus is your which one? Your rabies one. There's so many other uh shapes also. We space vehicle, we told you Adnan Swamika space, so it is adenovirus. And then what other space vehicles, star, astroviruses, and then uh, your co corona, it is a peplomers, you know, flower shaped peplomers are there. And then uh, which other thing we missed? Uh, the cartwheel, cartwheel, wheel, wheel. What do you do with the wheel? You rotate, rotavirus, okay? Wheel say rotate, virus. So these are the important virus shapes. And filamentous is your Ebola virus, which is filamentous, right? You, I, I'm sure you guys remember it. Don't worry, more revision, more thing. You will, it will be in your fingertips. Micro will be in your fingertips. Don't worry. Yes. Okay. Now let's go to the next one. Structure. So what is the structure? The structure, which is the most important structure, most important pathogen for this. You see this picture. You remember this glycoprotein, glycoprotein G. This is the main virulent factor. The virulent factor is glyco. It's a simple protein. It's just a glycoprotein only. G. But it has so many significant. What? It has important role in the pathogenesis. So this is important, which is the main role in fact, G, 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 G. Glycoprotein is important for the rabies virus. So important role in the pathogenesis and it binds the acetylcholine receptor and travel to the brain and uh, the antibodies used for what? The antibody, the, you know, the G, glycoprotein G antibodies is usually protection against rabies. That's what we use it for making the vaccination also. So glycoprotein G is a hero here. For rabies cut, G is the main thing. G, gun or glycoprotein is the main thing to, uh, you know, for the rabies. And then, of course, we have nucleoprotein. So both the things, uh, glycoprotein, nucleoprotein, both can be used for the diagnostic part. Okay, both your glycoprotein, nucleoprotein can be used for the diagnosis. Now types. Of course, there are two types. You know, one is a street one, another one is a fixed one. Street is dangerous one. Fixed one is for vaccine purpose, right? So we have street and the, uh, the two viruses we're going to talk now. The one is the street and other one is the fixed lab viruses. The street viruses means itself, you know, okay, street means itself. That is the one which is causing the rabies. This is the one which is causing the rabies. Whereas your fixed one is basically for the vaccine, for vaccine production. That's important. Remember that. So the street is for causing the rabies. So the question goes like this. First of all, so this is the, once again, I'm going to write it here. So uh, it will be easier. Huh. A little bit off now, sorry. Yes. Okay. It's here. I'm going to put it here. Yeah. So, uh, what are the things now we want to say? So, this is the uh, street one. Street. And this is fixed virus. Street virus. Rabies curve. We have two. Street virus and the fixed virus. The street one causes the rabies, which is, this is the furious one. Furious or the rabies. The street is also called furious. Furious means, you know, very dangerous. Rabies. So here, no, actually it is just for vaccine. It is not for this, just for the vaccine. It doesn't cause rabies. Negri bodies, of course, positive in your street virus. Rabies is negri bodies. But in fixed virus, men, no. Fixed virus is basically it's made in lab. You know why you will get a negri bodies there. So it's obvious there is no negri bodies. And then this is for, it causes the infection. Here it's basically vaccine strain. So because vaccine strain means, it's just, it, you know, the incubation should, period should be fast. Of course, only four to five days. But when you have proper rabies, it takes up to three months it can go. You know, it starts slowly, slowly it goes. And if shorter the incubation, if it's close to CNS, I mean, if the bite is, if the dog bites on the face or in the arm, the, the, uh, the time for getting the rabies infection is very high because it goes very fast, right? But then if it is long, uh, if it is like from your legs, if the dog bites on the leg, then it will take much more time to cause the infection. The distance between, because it goes and affects your brain, no? That's where the hypocerebellum, brainstem of the parts, no? So it takes some time to go and affect it. That's what, okay. 
So this is the thing. And transmission animal bite, of course, definitely dog bite is the first one. No doubt in it. And then uh, followed by bat also. Okay, dog bite is most common, followed by bats. And then uh, licking the abrasion, inhalation of the bat, also corneal uh, transplant, these or other non. I mean, transplants also, sometimes they can ask this one. Corneal transplant. Corneal transplant also one of the thing which can be spread that is your rabies. Very rare, very, very rare, but yeah, it's possibilities. Clinical features. So what are the clinical features? You know typical rabies, how the rabies patient looks. I don't have to say anything. So how they look, they, of course, they have the uh, encephalitis they get, they have hydrophobia, right? They have hydrophobia and aerophobia, everything, because they are uh, fear of water, because the spasm is very high. You know, they have spastic uh, paralysis type. So, uh, you know, uh, the limbic system undergoes away. So they have hydrophobia, they have aerophobia, they can't breathe. They are uh, all because of the spasms, okay? So they are scared, fatal outcome, definitely. And if it's a dumb uh, rabies, means these ones are not that dangerous. They just cause simply flaccid paralysis, not spastic, flaccid paralysis. So not that dangerous. So furious is the most dangerous type, right? Diagnosis, diagnosis can be two. Antimortem or postpartum, because most if the patient is having rabies, patient will die. The chance of mortality is very high. Yeah, mostly will die. So uh, luckily if it comes before dying, then it's antimortem diagnosis. If it's after, then it's postmortem. So in antimortem, what is what we have to do? Basically, everywhere we're going to take the smear only. Okay, we're going to take the uh, smear, the bite the smear. So now, in antibiotic diagnosis, uh, you're going to tell me the sample is from the hair follicle, but hair follicle from which part? That's important. Which part? Which part? What are you going to give, give me the answer? You, are you going to say something related to neck? Nape of the neck? You're right. Nape of the neck. Nape of the neck, say, the hair follicle, you will take the sample from there. And then you make other, you do direct fluorescent antigen or you do a stain or whatever, okay? So sample from the hair follicle, especially from the nape of the neck is the right answer. Also corneal smith. Corneal is very painful because patients are alive, so it's difficult. So nape of the neck is the right, but yeah, if you know, if possible, corneal smear also. Okay, then direct fluorescent antigen test you have to do, that is to detect that's the best test. Direct fluorescent is the best test. Easily uh, you can do it, okay? And then PCR also we can do. Uh, so now the in exam, this question is highly expected question. Uh, if I'm examiner, definitely I'll put this question there. So can you tell me what is this? So this is your neurons. These are the uh, your Purkinje cells. You know, these are your neuronal cells, right? These are neuron cells. So inside the neuron cells, Purkinje cells, whatever, see these neuron cells. You see this body here. The one you see here and then see here inside the neuron. This one, this one, and here this one. These things, these things are called what? Your negri bodies. Negri bodies. I'm sure negri bodies is in your brain. You'll never ever forget a negri bodies. No chance that no way you'll forget the negri bodies because that question is important. Ask bullet shaped virus and negri bodies is mandatory. You should know. Okay. And postmortem. Postmortem after patient dies. So when the patient dies, uh, what you do? You check for the bodies. What is the body postmortem? May the, the picture just now I showed you. That is the negri bodies. So you see negri bodies, question, it's an intracytoplasmic inflation bodies, of course, and most commonly it is seen in which side? That was repeated, I don't know how many exams they have repeated this question, most commonly seen in the seri, the, the uh, sorry, I would tell the first important one is hippocampus, hippocampus, an option if this is it, that's the best answer, or cerebellum, next would be cerebellum. Then would be your brain stem. So all three are right. So if all three options are there and all of the above, you can simply mark all of the above. Okay. Hippocampus, cerebellum, brain stem. Hippocampus is a memory center. You know that, right? And cerebellum and brain stem. That's it. Okay. Stain. I told you. What does Lisa do? Lisa, kya karte uska dog ko? Sells. She sells the rabbit's dog. She doesn't want to keep with her. She kills or she sells. So sellers, sellers stain. It's not apostrophe. It's sellers. Sellers stain. It's very easy. Okay. Sellers stain. Okay. Now, management. So we have different categories. Category one, two, three. So category one, uh, also can expect questions from here. Category one is nothing. You just, you know, touching the animal or licking the intact skin, nothing will happen. So no treatment, nothing. Just wash, wash the uh, area properly with uh, plenty of, you know, soap and just water and soap enough and then send. Minor may, minor risk may, there's minor abrasions without any bleeding. The idea is bleeding is there or not. That is the most important one. If there is no bleeding, but there's abrasion, but there is no bleeding, only minor abrasion is there, 
then local wound care. Local wound care, you know, wash with plenty of water and soap. That's it. Not, don't cover the wound. Don't put any uh, your Ayurvedic mirchi, dhania or whatever coffee powder. No, no such business. In exam, that will be asked. Those things are wrong. You will not even, not even put the stitches. Don't stitch or cover. Just put, wash it properly and mild covering if it is really needed with a cloth loose covering and then go to hospital immediately. Okay, there doctors will take further care. Now, uh, that is the thing if the wound is deep. Uh, local wound care and then rabies vaccine. So, if just the abrasion, vaccine is enough. But if you see bleeding, the word bleeding comes in your question. There's a dog bite and the patient has a bleeding. It can be small bleeding, big bleeding, doesn't matter. If there is a bleeding, you have to give what? Apart from the wound care rabies vaccine, you have to give the human rabies immunoglobulin. Human rabies immunoglobulin. Very important. You got it? Okay, if there's no bleeding, nothing to do. Just vaccine is enough. Just abrasion, Kelly, just vaccine and send it. But if he has a bleeding, then you have to give your vaccine also, wound care, vaccine plus HRG, human rabies immunoglobin one. It's very, uh, of course, very expensive one. You put it uh, injection also and also on the wound. It's, it's very better if you put it on the wound, it's more effective. Okay, you have to do that immediately. Now the doses. What are the vaccine doses? Generally, after bite, what are the vaccine doses you're going to do? You're going to start as zero, three, 7, 14, 28. Okay, doses plus one booster at 90 days. Very important. This can be a question, right? 0, 3. 3 plus 3, plus three 6, but you make it as 7. Okay, uh, 7, 7 into 2, 14, 14 into 2, 28. And then the booster at after, 50, uh, after uh, 90 days. You give a booster. That's it. So these are treatment. Okay, so we are done with the rabies. Now again, few more uh, picorno viruses left in uh, uh, RNA. So we are going to talk about picorno in the uh, next one. And that would be the last virology. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you so much. And uh, of course, a lot of questions also will be made in a further session. I'll share with you. Bye, guys.